for. Time for at the press review now with Dipti. She's starting with that. The French press set covering that rape of a 12-year-old Jewish girl is garnering, not surprisingly, a lot of attention, Dipti. Yeah, that's right, Stuart. The brutal rape of this very young girl by three teenagers in a Parisian suburb has sent shockwaves uh, throughout France. Le Monde, which actually had access to some of the interrogation reports from the police, uh, uh, describes it as unbearable in this article. The girl is Jewish, and according to the uh, report, she was targeted because of her faith. Uh, and Le Monde, actually, in this article, puts forward some really... Um, um, terrifying, I guess, statistics according to poll maker EFOP, uh, which uh, a few in the recent months said uh, found that 35% of 18 to 25 year olds in France believe it would be justified to target Jewish people because of their support for Israel. Now, on the back of that, of course, this all uh, comes in a very uh, a tense political climate here in France, as you mentioned, just 10 days before the beginning of those parliamentary elections. Um, and uh, the rape of this young girl has become extremely politicized as well. On our website, you'll see an article uh, which looks at how extreme left leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon condemned uh, anti-Semitic racism on the far right. Jean um, Marine Le Pen uh, attacked the extreme left for their alleged stigmatization of Jewish people uh, since the conflict in Gaza. What about um, reaction then from the foreign press, Dipti? Well, you have El País, the Spanish paper, looking at this on their front, uh, on their, in, their, uh, in their online edition today, uh, saying anti-Semitic attacks in France have in, indeed multiplied since the outbreak of the conflict in, uh, in Gaza. It follows uh, in a, quote, long tradition of anti-Semitism that nobody wants to be associated with, according to the paper. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, right during this electoral period, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, for his part, has been accused of fanning the flames of anti-Semitism in a bid to court French voters of Arab origin. Mine Le Pen has positioned herself as a savior of the Jewish people when uh, it's been well documented uh, the anti-Semitic ties, not just to her family, but also to the far-right party that her father founded. So the pa paper calling uh, the rape of this young girl a tragedy on a personal, social, and political level. You have Haaretz, the Israeli paper, the center-left Israeli paper, saying in this article here that many Jewish people in France say they might just have to leave France or they want to leave France if either the extreme left or the far right come to power. Different story for you now. The Italian Senate uh, approving a bill which critics say could lead to a more authoritarian governance in the country, uh, run, of course, by the far right leader, Giorgio Meloni. That's right. That planned bill aims to devolve more power to regional authorities in Italy and essentially allow them more power in running their affairs how they want. The autonomy bill is now a law. That's what Il Gazzettino says on its front page here in this article. Uh, and uh, uh, the vote was actually approved early on Wednesday, but it took a night of fierce debating for them to approve that vote to, uh, passed with 172 votes in favour and 99 against. It's part of a wider government overhaul of Italian state affairs. And you have Il Manifesto, the communist paper, also looking at that, uh, evoking what it calls a critically differentiated autonomy, an old Northern League dream that's become state law. That's on the front page of Il Manifesto. And you found a piece in Politico, haven't you, Evan, explainer on just why the bill's so important? Absolutely. From an outside perspective, it could seem like rather dry Italian uh, legislation that would only make sense to people in the country. But if you look from it, look at it from a sort of more historical point of view, it's very interesting. Uh, the significance of this bill was uh, it's really mainly because it lies in the fact that it was put forward by Italy's wealthy right wing led Lombardy and Veneto regions with the center left led Emilia Romagna region as well. These are the regions where, um, with with a lot of money, the wealthier regions, and essentially under this legislation, they would be able to use that money however they want for their regional affairs. This includes tax revenue collection, but also public services like education and health. It's also exposed a deep wound in Italy, once again reviving stereotypes of the rich north and the poor south, uh, one that this stereotype that actually dates back to 1861 and uh, as Politico mentions, it's clearly a divide that has not healed in Italian society. And concretely, if you look at the numbers, it also means that these three regions that I mentioned uh, would be able to retain 
their taxes are worth 190 billion euros, which means that that money would not then be uh, passed on to the other uh, poorer regions or uh, less financially successful regions of Italy. And this therein lies that conflict. Now, we talked a lot about anti-Semitism, of course, at the start of the press review. So we're getting with a wonderful story. This is about a Holocaust survivor on the front of a Vogue. That's right. German Vogue. Uh, in fact, uh, this, is, uh, this is that cover of German Vogue's summer edition. Her name is Margot Freelander. She's 102 years old, Stuart, one of the last surviving uh, survivors of the Holocaust. And now, as you see on the face, gracing the cover of Vogue Germany. Uh, she was just 12 years old when Hitler came to power. Her family was murdered in Auschwitz. She was sent to another concentration camp where she then met her future husband. And since the end of the war, she has really dedicated her life to promoting peace to talking about her family history, what happened to her, uh, and um, promoting peace and unity. So in addition to the numerous awards she's collected, she can now add a cover girl or Vogue <laughs> cover girl at the tender age of 102 years old. It's a wonderful tribute, particularly yeah. at this time of growing anti-Semitism. She looks amazing for she 102 does. as well. She does. I think we're all so thinking, she... wow, I hope we all look like that when we were 102, if we ever get there, of course. <laughs> Dipti, thanks very much. Dipti, get along with the papers for us here on France 24.